In case you're new to this channel and you haven't seen any of our previous videos, my husband Robbie and I have been spending the last several years preparing this sailboat to finally sail. We have been making sure that the rigging is safe and the hull is sound, among other important tasks. I'm thinking that this video might be particularly useful to beginner sailors who've always wanted to know what it's like to cruise in a tropical place, specifically aboard a lower budget, simple sailboat. So come sail with us aboard our 40 foot sailboat in Esperada, along the Riviera Maya, the Yucatan Peninsula's coastline, on an overnight journey to a kid's sailing regatta. Welcome to our lovely boat in Esperado. Here are some of the basic aspects for getting the boat to sail. First, the tiller. This controls whether the boat goes left or right. If I push the tiller to the right, the boat is going to turn left. If I pull the tiller towards me to the left, the boat is going to turn to the right. But of course, we don't say left and right on a sailboat. We say starboard and port. Port and starboard are the same anywhere you are on the vessel, whether we're looking at each other, if I'm looking towards the stern of the boat, the back of the boat, or whether I'm looking towards the bow of the boat, the front of the boat, it's always going to be starboard and port side. This is always going to be the port side winch. That's always going to be the starboard side winch. All right, let's come to the forward of the boat. So here we are at the bow, the front of the boat. And on a boat, we have different kind of ropes. They're called lines. Our halyards travel up. So this halyard will bring our forward sail or our jib up to the top of this stay. The shackle, the clip on the halyard will attach to the head of the sail. And then we will pull the sail up to the top. We call the forward sail that we usually work with the jib because the sail area is fairly small and it does not extend back past the mast. It has three vertices, the head, the tack, and the clue. Also three edges that are important for communicating how to control the sail, the luff, the foot, and the leech. So usually we would have our forward sail up at the front, but we store it inside for now out of the sun and the rain. We have our mainsail hidden inside of the mast. It's furled into the mast. The mainsail, just like our jib, has a head, tack, and clue. Luff, foot, and leech. And our mainsail is already attached at the head of it, at the top of the sail, to the halyard, and the halyard is already brought to the top of the mast. On this boat, our halyards are all controlled at the mast here. We have our halyard that controls our, our jib, and then this solid gray line is actually the mainsail halyard. Continuing on with our lines, we have our main sheet. So we have our halyards that control the vertical movement of our sails, and here we can control the lateral movement of our mainsail. The equivalent on our forward sail, the jib, would be the jib sheets. So if I ease out the main sheet, the sail will go out, and if I sheet it in, I will bring the main sail back to the center of the boat. What do you have to say? Why are you laughing? That's so hard. Continuing on with our control lines, we have the out haul. If I pull on this line, I will pull the main sail out of the mast, unfurl it, and over on the opposite side. If I pull on this line while the sail is out of the mast, the furling slash reefing line, it will roll or furl the mainsail back into the mast. The furling system of our mainsail is actually the same system that we use to shrink the sail or reef the sail. On a lot of small monohulls, you'll have a mainsail system which has slides or slugs. You pull up the halyard and the sail goes up and then you can reef the sail by bringing it down a little bit or to, to certain reefing points and you'll find on a lot of boats that they'll have a furling system with the forward sail but on our boat instead it's really easy to reef in the mainsail and the only thing we can do to shrink our forward sail is to have a smaller separate sail or to have a bigger separate sail. There are, of course, many, many more elements and moving parts to talk about, but we'll leave it at that for now and get into more specifics as we go along. We start our journey in much the same way that we began sailing this particular boat several years ago, anchored off of Isla Mujeres, this time anchored 
as close as possible to shore. It gets pretty busy in the anchorage closer to shore, but we need to be able to row our inflatable dinghy back and forth from the shore to pick up some food and drink for the trip. A dirty boat bottom can remove one or two knots of speed, so we have to give her a scrub regularly. The growth is quick here in the warm water and on a non anti fouled surface. The soft, fuzzy layer needs cleaning every couple of days. This supposedly hard bottom paint is less than one year old, and it's already almost worn off the hull completely. But more about that in another video. We planned to depart before the sun was up to try and arrive at our destination before it becomes dark again. We're familiar with both the anchorage that we're departing from and also from the one we're planning to arrive at. If you are not 100% familiar with the safest way to approach your destination, navigating into an anchorage in the dark can be one of the most hazardous parts of sailing. It's five o'clock in the morning, the sun's not up yet, and we're just getting set to get the boat sailing. Robbie's putting on the jib. Let's see what he has to say about it. Hey Robbie, do you have any advice about putting on the jib? Not upside down. The top of your sail is going to be the pointy side. Well, all three <laughs> corners are pointy. Either. Okay, we have a little bit of wind, so just in case you didn't hear that, his advice is make sure all the hanks are on and pointy side goes up. Engine is on because the wind is coming straight in our face. We've got our neighbor who's quite close. We're going to pull up the anchor and we're going to motor off our spot this time. Our anchor windlass can only be manually operated for now. I simply winch up the anchor and then give Robbie a thumbs up to put the engine into forward gear when I see the anchor come out of the water. If there's a very strong breeze, it can help for the engine to already be put into forward gear at minimum revs. If the anchor is really well dug into the mud, we sometimes give it a light nudge in forward gear to help pull or uncatch the anchor from the bottom. Once the anchor is up, I always make sure to secure it to a cleat nearby so that we do not have an accidental deployment of anchor while sailing. Robbie already unfurled the mainsail while I was bringing up the anchor. Okay, we're turning a little bit more downwind, getting out of the channel. Now to hoist up the jib. Once the sail is hoisted up as much as possible by hand, I wrap the halyard around the winch and grind the rest up until there are no more wrinkles between the hanks on the luff of the sail. We're sailing, so now we can turn off the engine. We're making a good five knots. I can turn off the engine. Everything is stowed, more or less. Hatches forward are closed. You have to point at the last building. Once we're free of all the other boats, ferries, and obstacles, we can engage the wind vane which is our autopilot, which involves adjusting the vane so that it points towards the direction of the wind. Centering the tiller as much as possible while remaining on our desired course, and then attaching the chain to the tiller. We are traveling on a beam reach here, meaning that the wind is coming almost directly from our side, our beam. With the sails as balanced as possible and the wind vane engaged, now I just have to keep a 360 degree watch around me for any traffic or obstacles and keep an eye on our speed and upcoming waypoints. After we pass this buoy, we change our course slightly about 10 degrees, 10, 15 degrees. We've arrived at our next marker of navigation. I make a quick estimation. We have roughly five nautical miles to go until we meet our next point where we will change direction slightly. We're traveling at a speed of five nautical miles per hour, so we should arrive at that next point in approximately one hour. So we hit our next waypoint, we hit the buoy, but there was no buoy there. This is a typical thing along the Mexican coastline. We aim for a buoy, but then we find that there's no buoy there. So if we were relying only on buoys and aids to navigation, that should be there. 
we would be in more danger than if we are relying on GPS. <laughs> so you should be not relying on only one source. Obviously, the more information, the better. We rely a lot on our depth sounder to tell us if we have enough depth along this particular coastline, which we are really familiar with now. We know that if we have 30 meters of water, we're not going to hit anything. But that's a little different as you get closer to Cozumel. Cozumel has some bigger bombies, some bigger reefs that really grow up into the shallower water line. But along the mainland coast, along the Riviera Maya, we know that there's nothing to hit in in more than 30 meters of water. Robbie's main goal, of course, when sailing is to get his fishing gear into the water. That's a mutton snapper? Yeah. And we quickly get some lunch and dinner on board. I think there was more than one on the shore. Hmm. I'm gonna make it uh, battered and fried. Although it's a little more challenging while underway, we can cook with the solar cooker. We just need to secure the large cooker to the deck just in case. So it's time to get up a little bit. Yeah. Most of the journey consists of tightening in the sheets as the wind direction changes a little more into our face throughout the day and make small adjustments to our course when necessary. If we're trying to get a heading of exactly 187, how likely are we to get a heading of 187? I don't know if the wind vane has accuracy to the last point. I think say give or take 10 degrees. We go by 180, 190. She likes to wobble 10, 15 degrees, depends. Where's the fish? Where's the fish? In fact, we chose this weather window because the wind is coming from the shore. We don't have a leeward shore, meaning we are not being blown towards the shore shoreline if, if we were to lose power. The boat will not naturally be pushed into the shore. There's no chance of zero knots of wind. And we've already talked about our plan A is to sail. Our plan B is to sail slowly. And our plan C, under in the circumstance that there would be no wind, and we would have no power, let's say we also couldn't use the engine, is to anchor the boat. And that is possible here. That's why we, we take the route that we do. We can always drop the anchor if we need to. And in fairly deep water, stop the boat, essentially. We've sailed this shoreline. We have experienced times where there's very little wind and the boat basically stops, like out in front of Playa del Carmen. We've had that happen in a previous video, in a recent video. In that circumstance, we just waited for the wind to come back up. And we got a little bit of wind and we were able to sail the rest of the way on our way. If you lose all power, you can... Uh, you can... To the wind dies. We all gotta die! Okay. So it's important not not to panic, to assess what your, your situation is. I mean, we keep on hearing about other boats. A another boat that was anchored next to us, they came down and did the same sail, heading towards Guatemala. 
and they ran out of wind and they don't they didn't have an engine and they ended up on the reef and they basically touched the reef and then bounced off and and kept on going the boat didn't sink or or get dried out or anything like that they were probably experiencing wind direction that pushes them towards the shore so that's dangerous that in that circumstance you're needing to plan ahead you need to not be sailing so close to the shore if the wind direction is going to push you that way naturally. Once you're stuck on the shore, there's nothing to get you off the shore except for your own ingenuity. If you don't have an engine, you're going to have to try and catch yourself off. You're going to have to put your dinghy in the water, get your anchor out on the dinghy, row the anchor out into deeper water, and then pull with your windlass and trying to pull your boat out into deeper water. And another occasion here on this shoreline that unfortunately that didn't work out for another boat, trying to catch the boat off of the, the beach, for example, in Puerto Aventuras. So to summarize, in our case today, we have really good wind. We have really good uh, weather for that being very unlikely that the boat will be pushed towards shore. But you have to have your backup plan. If we lose power, if we lose wind, and if we don't have engine, what are you gonna do? The next step is you're going to deploy your anchor. When you're going downwind, you can kind of think of a pirate ship and the big square sails just up like this. You're going downwind, your boat is just going downwind and the wind was just pushing your boat forward. Yes, our sails still work fairly well downwind because it doesn't matter that much when you're just being blown from behind. But once you are not running, once your boat is getting something closer to a beam reach, so here's the boat and the wind is coming and hitting directly the side of our boat. We're, we're de more dependent on the shape of our sails. We need to implement more so the aircraft wing science. The science of sailing can somewhat or partly be explained by Bernoulli's principle. Of course, sails are like airplane wings. They're this curved wing shape, and then the only difference on a sailboat is that the wing is sideways. Air is traveling faster over the curved upper side versus the air that's traveling on, on the flat side or the inside of the sail. The difference in those speeds create pressure under here and you get lift. When you're on a sailboat, instead of going up, your sailboat is being s basically sucked forward. Under the water, you have your keel, and that's stopping a lot of the sideways movement. So your sail shape really matters. If your sails are anything like our sails, the sails are really old, you're not able to create that exact shape you're looking for. Very useful, of course, is that old point of sail, old fashioned point of sail diagram. It gives you an idea of how you need to trim your sails. Either the sails need to be out or the sails need to be sheeted in. We're able to see on our boat exactly how much we need to sheet in or to ease out our sails based on only a very simplified technology of the string wrapped around the shrouds because of course we lost our windex a while back. A bird came and sat on the top of our mast and uh, somehow that meant that we didn't have a windex anymore. The more low down of course your wind indicator is, the less accurate your wind. It's not less accurate. What you re when, when it comes to wind, what you really want to know is the wind at the surface of the sea and then the wind up your mast and so you can see whether it's more more strong down or more strong on top and which direction it comes from. It's not just the wind on top of your mast. You should also see the wind down and how it comes off your sails. 
So with our little string technology, we can see at least uh, on the ocean level, on the deck level, wind direction. We can kind of tell how strong the wind is based on this piece of material. We never know the exact speed. Certainly don't get true wind speed out of it, but they tell us more or less. I mean, if the, if the string can be lifted, then we know that definitely our sails are going to be able to be lifted. They're not just going to flop around. Let's say the wind speed is 50 knots. Your true wind speed will just be that wind itself coming down versus apparent wind speed. For example, the wind is blowing 50 knots from the northwest. We're sailing southbound about five knots and so subtract those five knots from that 15 knots and you get your apparent wind speed. The wind that you're feeling on your face, on your body, feels like 10 knots instead of 15 knots. Or, for example, if we were sailing almost directly into that northwest wind, you would add another five knots to that 15 knots. The wind feels like 20 knots on your face. Again, we don't have any of these electronics on the boat, uh, wind indicators or wind speed or uh, any sort of paddles in the water to give us that kind of information. We're relying on uh, basically the strings and the GPS, chart plotter, the GPS to give us our speed over ground. We can very roughly measure boat speed by dropping a food scrap or two into the water and timing how long it takes for it to travel from bow to stern away from us. But that really only tells us speed through water and not so much about how long it might take us to get to our destination. I can be slower or I can already start to point him. With the ferries going by back and forth at Playa, we have to watch. One is pulling out right now. He's gonna try and pass in front of us, that's for sure. They, they don't give way. We can unhook the wind vane. We can already start to point towards him, towards the back of him. They move very quickly, except the one part where they're backing out, backing out, backing out. Well, that's the first time a ferry has ever passed behind us. <laughs> When our speed really slowed, however, we estimated that we would not be making it to our anchorage before dark. We observed the buoys very close up ahead now, so close to where we would need to turn in towards land, yet so very far. As we slowed and slowed and slowed. We just really didn't want to turn on the infernal engine. All right, final mile and a half until we arrive at the anchorage here. It's just an open roadstead anchorage. We've turned on the engine and when we arrive at exactly the center of this little mini mini horseshoe bay, we're going to make a 90 degree turn inside, bring down all the sails and drop the anchor. Robbie let down the anchor in about five meters of water while I reversed the boat slowly in the same direction where we expected the wind to blow, and then we settled in for the night. 